It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it's all up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to the Sunshine State at Everbank Stadium here in Jacksonville. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it will be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white line. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. kicker Brandon McManus about ready to get us started and off we go from Jacksonville and no run back here so they'll bring it out to the 25 here come the Bengals now to take over and they're brought out by the former Washington Husky undrafted back in 2019 Jake Browning you want to talk about a driven player partner this guy is absolutely that person. He doesn't just have goals in this game. He wants to be remembered among the best to play the position, and he treats every game as an audition for that. It's a lofty goal to set for yourself, but we've seen his drive lead to some impressive games from him. Perhaps another one is in store today. Here's Browning. That's complete to the tight end sample. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. To throw, Browning. This one hauled in by Sample. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? And Browning's throw taken in here by Chase. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Now Browning. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. Well, they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 four four on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that, I'm continuing to let him throw the football. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. He will find his man Chase complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. The end result, 21 yards. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. 
First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll give it to Mixon. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Joe Mixon, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals are on the board first here this afternoon. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine-yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They'll be led out by a man who took that huge jump everyone had hoped for in year two, one of the game's brightest young stars, and that's Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Now Lawrence on first down. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs. But in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Second and 10. First carry for the Clemson man, Travis Etienne. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Tried to get the edge there. The defense just too quick to the ball. That's what we call total team defense there. Can't get to the edge, no place to move it inside, and then allows everyone else to run to the ball and create a big time tackle for no gain for the offense. He's going to go for a big play downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. And look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Throwing to start the drive. Browning. Throw left side complete to Chase. And he's brought down. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early. And that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive. And now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. On first and 10, Browning, another one into the hands of Jamar Chase. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Jamar Chase, it's a gain of seven, brings up second and three at the 37-yard line.
Running left, it's Mixon. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 47 yards rushing for him now on just his first three carries. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to, but they didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. Back to Mixon on first down. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Tyson Campbell up to make the stop. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Looking to throw on second down. Browning throwing it in traffic there, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. Back to throw, Browning. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage, back at the six. This will wind up a loss on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. And not what you're looking to do on third and one, completing the pass, but going backward. I have zero explanation for that, because third and one, you just figure snap, throw, first down, right? Easy play, but end up losing yardage on it. That's hard to account for. McPherson's kick is good. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. A slant to Jones. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. Balled it to 26, second and seven. ETN up the middle. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Looking to throw, Lawrence. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10.
Throwing to start the drive. Browning. And he'll find Chase on the right side complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. Defensively going forward, they're going to have to watch out for him on plays just like that. It's a drag route across the field, and they're trying to free him up and let him run after the catch. That won't be the last time we see that play, and it works there to pick up a first down. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Looking to throw. Browning. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. On second down, here's Mixon. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a Bengal first down. He's settling in nicely here in the first quarter running the football. Remember, he already has the touchdown run. And you can feel the vibe, can't you? He's in unison with his offensive front. They are in concert together. So if you're flipping over to the other side of the line of scrimmage, they've got to be more physical and handle some of these gaps that have been created. Tackled there by Rayshon Jenkins. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Browning's throw into the hands of Sample. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 12-yard line. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Uh, it's a well-designed play here. Three wide receivers in the formation. They're all going to run deep routes to put pressure on the safeties. And then they let their tight end cut his route off a little shorter and work toward the middle of the field. That's a difficult route to try to defend. On first down, Browning. This goes out wide from Nixon. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From the four, it's second and a couple. They go back to the ground now with Nixon. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Ten-nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. Back to throw. Browning. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Drew Sample there to make the grab. And the Bengals are able to add on to that lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. And McPherson on for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. 
So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and it ends with a Bengals score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. We'll see if they can do better here on this drive. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. They'll look to ETN to start things out. Gets by him at the 25. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Now, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Now a second and two. ETN once more. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. From the 35, here's second down and seven. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. His throw incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. On third down, Lawrence. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 37. That gain on third down, good for 28. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They go play action with Lawrence. Now a quick throw there, but it's gonna be incomplete. Charles, he doesn't seem to be particularly in tune with his receivers, just two for seven throwing the football, but he did seem really locked in before the game. Yeah, and that has to do with receivers sometimes. Sometimes the defenders knock them off their routes, and you're usually pretty precise. One, two, three, cut, balls out of his hands to the receiver. In this case, might be off by a half step either way. They've got to find a way to get back in sync. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. On the draw, here's Lawrence. 
And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, partner, this drive has been a model of efficiency. They've done everything they've wanted to, and the defensive guys, they've got to be getting frustrated. They can't figure out how to get off the field. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Lawrence. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Touchdown, Jaguars! Travis Etienne, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Jaguars are able to cut into that deficit. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. McManus's point after is good, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. A 10-play drive that time, and it was Travis Etienne on the touchdown reception capping the drive. the touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away this taken in right around the goal line and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line out is their quarterback with this offense to take over once more he threw a touchdown pass last time they had it and he'll look to get him in the end zone again here as they start with the first down Throwing to start the drive. Browning, they'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The first down screen pass, good for five. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. This is Mixon on the draw. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 86 yards rushing here for Mixon. He's got a first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Throwing on first down. Brown working the middle here. That's complete to sample the tight end. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second and a couple. A handoff, running left, mix it. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he's taken down inside the 30. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge 
And they complete the pass there for another first down. On first and ten, Browning. That's going to be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. Drew Sample with his second touchdown here in this first half. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. In the second quarter and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. McPherson on for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That time, a six-play drive. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, ke keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the well, football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Nice, satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Now Lawrence. That is caught. He's across midfield and all the way down to the 33-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run, 36 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Lawrence to throw. Incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. Here's second and 10. Here's a give to Bigsby. And a short gain down to about the 33. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Now Lawrence. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 13-yard line. Nice third down conversion at even 20 yards. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Lawrence. He'll get that underneath ETN. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. From the five, here's second and two. Back to the ground with ETN. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? I, mean, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. ETN is in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it, and he gets it done. McManus now for the extra point. It's up and good, so they claw back into a 24-14 now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. the touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away and this take it in at the goal line and his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field he's been good his guys are winning so far the recipe working here in the second quarter he doesn't like to just tote the rock he wants to carry his team on his back and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. To throw, Browning. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28th. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Here's Browning. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or a man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now Browning. Looking for Chase on the out route. He's got him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. to throw again. He completes it to Boyd. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 23 yards on the play. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage.
Again, he'll drop to throw. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll make it second down. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions, and just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. To throw again on second down, Browning. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. 18 yards away, and the Bengals will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. They have really had their way so far in the first half, but they wanted to continue to build on their lead. They know that no lead is safe in this league, so they decided to try their best to get one more as they headed into the half, and they got it done. McPherson now for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with a three-score deficit staring him in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. Thirty-five seconds, all that remains in the first half as they come up on first down. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Looking middle, and that's complete. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. First and 10 here, you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. It's now second and 10. Now a second and 10. Looking to throw, Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Now Lawrence to throw. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. 
So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando and the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. They look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive on that play sheet for any of those coordinators? They just don't have it, right? <laughs> You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive but maybe cut into it a little bit as you just suggested. Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Lawrence will throw. A short throw there to Strange. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Straight ahead, ETN. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Well, give him credit for trying, but there is no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stuff the run, and then executed. Ball on the 40 now. Here's a second down and nine. From the shotgun, Lawrence. A short throw there to Strange. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there, and if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it into double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 34. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Throw out wide is incomplete. Zay Jones was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Lawrence going to throw again. That's caught. It's strange. The tight end. 
And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 23. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Running out of the gun with ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Man in motion is Agnew. Now they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. Now he'll be brought down short of the 15, but a really good move on the run. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is, that's where the linebackers usually play. First level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. This one from 35 yards away. The kick by McManus is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. So good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need him to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Back to Mixon on second down. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves them with third and five. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Here is third and five. Back to throw. Browning. To the sideline and incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. On the return, here's Agnew. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. 
But you gotta like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield, only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. The drive will start with an option going left. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Some teams like to start aggressive to begin a drive, but this is still what you expect to see in normal situations. Just call a simple run, get a few yards to begin the series, and set yourself up for something bigger on second down. And they'll come up second and seven. Lawrence. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, it's Lawrence. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Here's Jones. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Joe Mixon and the Bengal offense ready to go back to work. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Uh, throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now a pause for the injury, and that is, yes, Joe Mixon clearly in some discomfort following that last play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and one. Off the play fake, Browning. And that's going to be caught, T. Higgins. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 21. 23 yards to pick up there. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Browning throwing into the hands of Sample. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Looking to throw. Browning. This will be caught just inside the 10. And the Bengals are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the 9. They'll look to throw again. 
That's complete right around the eight. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. It's a gain of a yard. Brings up second and goal at the eight-yard line. Let's go, man. Let's go do this thing. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Touchdown! Jamar Chase from eight yards out. And the Bengals take a three-touchdown lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And some space here. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. I love football lingo and the evolution of it all. Nickel defense makes sense, right? Five defensive backs. But then you go to six, what are you going to call that? And they call it a Double dime. Double it. <laughs> a dime, which is just very simple for them. The math doesn't add up, but I know one thing. Offenses love to run against dime defenses. Typically, the bigger guys have an advantage against the smaller defensive backs when they're blocking downfield. Yeah, we saw that advantage right there. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Here's Lawrence to throw. A short throw there to Strange. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. Now Lawrence. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. A second and ten forthcoming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. Lawrence going to fire it out wide, complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. On play action, Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. But forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. First and goal at the 6-yard line. Let's go. 
It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Man in motion is Agnew. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that one never got off the ground. He's going to be stopped up well behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. On third and goal, Lawrence looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So now fourth and goal, you're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Jamal Agnew, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Jags have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point from McManus is good, and the lead will be cut down to 14. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. to throw Browning connecting on the out route here with Higgins call it a gain of a yard and it'll be second down but well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield you want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter can play out wide who could not only get open but when they're covered can uncover themselves downfield and create catches here's Brown on second down and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, 
you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now ETN to start the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 79 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 19 yards there on the catch and run. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? They'll set up to run the quarterback draw. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. ETN up the middle. And he'll go down at the 28. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. A quick throw there is incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now Lawrence. Man open here is Jones. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 12-yard line. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. A nice display of powerful running, but it takes him only to the seven. He's dropped there. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Here's Lawrence. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars! Evan Ingram, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Now McManus for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception.
after the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And the Bengals offense getting set and ready to go again here. This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side, and now... Yeah, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, they go into coast mode, and all of a sudden they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here, otherwise they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. And they'll begin here with a run by Brown. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. But well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because... Your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Out to the left. He's got Sample there. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. He needed five. He got it barely, as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. And that pickup of a first down... That's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay there. And not in any rush offensively. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll make a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 43. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Here's Browning. That's complete to the tight end sample. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Now Browning. And there's a good opportunity to just run a ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Back to throw again. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. But this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. This pass complete to Higgins. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. Five brings up 
second and five. An inside give, Brown. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Come on, dog! Boy, tight game like this, fourth quarter, personal foul penalties, a no-no. Yeah, we know the emotions are running high, the tensions are the same. Who can control them best could ultimately win it. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and 10. Operating from the gun, Browning. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carried around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Try to take this home. They'll run. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Brown is in. Touchdown, Bengals. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward. Touchdown. And McPherson on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And it ends with a Bengals score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars. Down by two touchdowns. A minute 52 to play. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. On first down, Lawrence firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Into the hands of Ingram. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Here's second and a yard. Yeah. 
A handoff for ETN, and he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. A two timeouts still remaining, but scoring quickly, a must. It's first and ten. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Just a difficult situation to be in here in the final minute. Down two scores. You know you need some providence from somewhere. They're going to keep firing away till the end, but this one falls incomplete. Inside a minute to go. Here's second and 10 now. Lawrence will throw. And that one behind his receiver and incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Well, this was a fun one today if you like points. A lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it. And with frequency. Not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a victory, even better for them. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.